The Oklawaha, the sweetest water lane in the world. A lane which runs for more than 150 miles of pure delight betwixt hedgerows of oaks and cypresses and palms and bays and magnolias and mosses and manifold vine growths. A lane clean to travel along, for there is never a speck of dust in it, save the blue dust and gold dust which the wind blows out of the flags and lilies. A lane which is as if a typical wood stroll had taken shape, and as if God had turned into water and trees the recollection of some meditative ramble through the lonely seclusion of his own soul. The Cross Florida Barge Canal was a terrible mistake. Before it was stopped, the project destroyed a large section of one of Florida's most outstanding rivers. If that misguided project had never begun, and the Ocklawaha River was still a free-flowing river with its productive floodplain forest undamaged, no one in the state of Florida would recommend destroying 16 miles of the river, 9,000 acres of its forest and its wildlife, in order to build one more temporary weed-choked lake. Fortunately, the senseless damage can be undone simply, quickly, and at a savings of millions of dollars to taxpayers. It is only logical and just that the Oklawaha be restored. In the 1960s, I became aware that the canal, if constructed, would go down the Ocklawaha River Valley and destroy 45 miles of it. And along with other people, I got very upset over that. And first we tried to uh, move the path of the canal, the route of the canal, and we weren't successful. Then the more we looked into it, we realized that not only would it destroy the river, but it would uh, endanger the Florida aquifer in this part of the state. And uh, so then we tried to stop the canal. And we went to court, and we got the facts out. We formed a group in 1969, Florida Defenders of the Environment. And we pulled together all the facts. And in Florida Defenders of the Environment, we are a coalition of specialists. I mean, they're biologists, lawyers, economists, land planners, geologists. And we pulled together the information. And um, early in 1970, we spread it all around during that year, and the media helped. And uh, in January of 1971, the canal was stopped. Restoring the Oklawaha to its former beauty offers us one of those grand situations in which everyone wins. This is one of those rare times when we can actually turn back the clock a quarter of a century and go back to the basic natural beauty that was once ours to enjoy in Florida. Restoring the Oklawaha will benefit wildlife, provide excellent fishing, and preserve an area of unusual beauty for our families to enjoy. A restored Oklawaha will improve the water in the St. John's River, providing a more nourishing environment for shrimp, blue crabs, and many kinds of fish. A restored Oklawaha will also provide an additional safe haven for manatees. And all of these benefits can be gained while saving money for the state of Florida. We need to undo the damage caused by construction of the Cross Florida Barge Canal. Parts of the river are still lovely, but much of it looks like this. Long before the advent of man, the beautiful Oklawaha, one of the great canopied rivers of Florida, was a healthy habitat for fish and wildlife. Wading birds fed in the shallows along the water's edge. The rich waters were home to over a hundred kinds of fish. Manatees were safe in springs along the river. The Oklawaha was a major pathway for fish and wildlife from the Atlantic coast into central Florida. In the mile-wide forest lining the river, 
Bears, panthers, and wolves travel from the shores of the St. John's River to the Withlacoochee Forest and Green Swamp. The Ocklawaha was one of the most beautiful and biologically rich ecosystems in Florida, a sparkling natural jewel valuable to both the first natives and modern men. But modern man has treated the Ocklawaha harshly. First, we stripped its forests of the big cypress. In the early 1900s, we drained the headwater marshes to grow truck crops. We straightened and dredged the river's twisting channel and turned the clear waters at the south end of the river into a murky soup for much of the year. Towns and farms added more polluted runoff to the once pure water. However, the river stayed reasonably healthy for a good many years. The great outpouring of clean water from Silver Springs helped the Ocklawaha remain lovely and productive for the 45 miles downstream. The really bad years for the Ocklawaha began in 1966, when the Army Corps of Engineers started building the Rodman Reservoir as part of the misguided Cross Florida Barge Canal project. Canal construction blocked the free-flowing river and destroyed 9,000 acres of floodplain forest along 16 miles of the river valley. The trouble started back in 1964 with the Barge Canal. The project called for a series of locks, reservoirs, and ditches that would float barges across the state. The engineers started at the St. John's River and dug a ditch inland about five miles. There, they built a lock to lift the barges up to the next level of the canal. They needed more water to float barges, so they built Rodman Dam across the Ocklawaha, eight miles from where the river joins the St. John's. The engineers prepared the area behind the Rodman Dam for flooding by clearing and crushing 5,000 acres of floodplain forest. And they left another 4,000 acres of forest to die. Damming the river and flooding the forest caused damage over a wide area. Sometimes there's no way to correct an environmental disaster. Fortunately, we can do something about this one. Under the still waters of Rodman Reservoir, the original channel of the Ocklawaha exists. The river still lives and can be restored. Natural ecosystems have a remarkable ability to heal themselves. We're lucky that the restoration of damaged ecosystems has become the official government policy in Florida. The state has begun huge efforts to put forests back where they used to be. The Ocklawaha is the largest tributary of the mighty St. John's River, which has brackish tidal water as far as 100 miles upstream. If we start now, it'll be fairly easy to restore the Ocklawaha to its free-flowing state, so that this wonderful river can once again provide recreation and delight, free of charge to Floridians. Some parts of the channelized river are being returned to their original course. The state has bought both banks of the Silver River below Silver Springs and is giving special protection to the Silver River and an adjacent 20-mile section of the Ocklawaha by naming them Outstanding Florida Waters. But before we can restore the Ocklawaha, we must first take care of the 16 miles of the river and forest that are under Rodman Reservoir. Damming the river was devastating to wildlife when the dam was built, 9,000 acres of productive forest were destroyed and its wild inhabitants were lost. But the damage extends far beyond the area of the reservoir. Many species of fish and wildlife must move long distances to complete their life cycles and find suitable food and shelter. The pathways provided by rivers and forests enable wildlife to meet these needs. Completion of the reservoir abruptly cut the aquatic and terrestrial pathways used by many species to travel along the river valley. The dam also blocked the spawning migrations of fish, striped bass, eels, and shad, so the river now has fewer kinds of fish. Several manatees have been crushed to death in the dam's floodgates and in Buckman Lock. What do we now have in place of the once lively natural river? The warm, shallow water rich in nutrients is ideal for the growth of choking water weeds. First, the water hyacinth covered the surface. As these plants die and decay, 
They add to the layer of muck and silt building up in the bottom, threatening the water quality. Shortages of oxygen have caused several huge fish kills in the reservoir. Slowly, Rodman Reservoir is filling in, just as biologists predicted before the Army Corps of Engineers built the dam. So far, Rodman Reservoir still provides feeding areas for wading birds, waterfowl, ospreys, and bald eagles. But restoring the river would benefit many types of wildlife, including the eagles that feed and nest along the St. John's River. What about human use of the reservoir? Because of water weeds, stumps, and floating logs, we can't go water skiing. Swimming is unpleasant and dangerous, and boating is restricted. When the reservoir was new, the Corps of Engineers built two small campgrounds and four boat ramps for fishermen. For the first few years, the waters of the reservoir and the tail race below the dam provided spectacular fishing for bass and sunfish. The turbulent waters just below the dam still offer good fishing. But as we expected, fishing in the rest of the reservoir has gone down. We have gained very little, and we have lost a lot. When they put a dam across the Oklawaha, we gained one artificial lake with a declining fishery. And what did we lose? A beautiful 16-mile stretch of subtropical canopied river, 9,000 acres of invaluable bottomland hardwood forest and its wildlife. Wildlife pathways were cut and the periodic nutrient pulses to the St. John's were eliminated. Lowland hardwood forests near rivers are the richest and most rapidly disappearing living spaces for wildlife in North America. Fortunately, when we restore the Oklawaha, we can restore the processes of nature quickly, and in the long run, we can save money. Draining Rodman Reservoir and recovering the river with its forests will have many benefits and will be fascinating to see. First, we will get back the pathways that fish and wildlife need to survive. Forest wildlife will return. Aquatic species such as otters, limpkins, and wood ducks that prefer swamps and forested shorelines rather than open water will become more abundant as time passes. Striped bass, shad, and manatees will once again be able to travel the Oklawaha. Water weeds will not be a problem in the shaded, swift-flowing river. River fishermen will return and canoeists will find haven as the canopied stream recovers. New visitors will find out about this gorgeous river and it will be even more valuable and rare as such places become scarcer in other parts of the nation. So in the long run, restoring the Oklawaha will give a boost to local and state economies. Most important, it will provide joy to Floridians on into the future. Restoring the river with its forest, fish and wildlife will be a reachable goal. And once restored, the maintenance costs will be negligible. The free-flowing Oklawaha takes care of itself. We need to remove enough of Rodman Dam to let the Oklawaha follow its original channel. We should drain the reservoir with a schedule that will allow natural reforestation by letting the water carry seeds for new trees from upstream. We may need to supplement the natural reseeding with reseeding from airplanes. The late Archie Carr described the process of restoration. The aftermath of draining Rodman Reservoir will not be a long, melancholy period of lifeless bare mud. From the time the reservoir is drained and the hydrilla dries out and blows away, the new land will be green, biologically lively, and rich with recreational assets. Almost as fast as the water recedes, the exposed bottom will come to life Seeds of most hydrophytic plants remain alive for years when underwater and quickly germinate when exposed. Within a few months, the newly exposed ground will become a green plain, attracting an abundance and variety of wetland birds. Slight differences in elevation and seed distribution will produce a mosaic of different pioneer communities. In some places, quick growing herbs and grasses will spread. Other areas will be colonized by seedlings of gum, maple, cypress, and other swamp and hammock trees. As the new landscape evolves, each successional stage will attract different combinations of species, with some members occurring in great numbers. As succession progresses, woody vegetation will gradually predominate over most of the area. And after about five years, 
the crowns of young trees will shade out the pioneer annuals. Within 20 to 30 years, the abused landscape will have regained its old look in young form, and the Rodman tract of the magnificent Oklawaha forest will be restored. Recovery of the river itself, rich with many forms of life, will be even more rapid. The original riverbed is still intact, lying there under the reservoir. In fact, much of the best fishing in the reservoir takes place near the old river channel. For the first year or two after draining the reservoir, the river will have extremely good fishing because of the many fish that will move back into the channel as the reservoir slowly drains. Long before the engineers dammed the river, the Oklawaha was world-renowned for the big bass caught in its waters. We can improve the recreational use of the restored river and floodplain by relocating the present campgrounds or putting new ones closer to the river. We should provide for bank fishing and add boat ramps so fishermen can easily reach all parts of the winding river. State and federal legislation mandating public ownership of all lands and waters in the Oklawaha Valley will help to preserve the river. That protection 